Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now this is the Minis Forum NAB6 or NAB6. I test a lot of these little machines from Minis Forum but this one has to be my favourite in terms of accessibility. I thought I'd broken it when I took it out of the box but it turns out that the top just pops off like this and gives you access to the storage and DDR4. Speaking of which, this one is configured with 16 gigs of 3200 megahertz memory and 512 gigs of storage space. Other options include 32 gigs of RAM and a one terabyte SSD. You can even order it bare bones if you want to. In addition to the easy access, we have a plethora of ports, including dual Ethernet connectivity. There's also USB 3.2, USB-C and dual HDMI. Because this one came with storage, it also has Windows 11 Pro installed, which runs very well thanks to the i7-12650H. I've not seen many reviews on this CPU, but I have no complaints when it comes to video editing or just general usage. The six performance cores, four efficient cores, 16 threads, and a max turbo of 4.7GB gigahertz sees that we don't run into any processor related slowdown. If you spend extra you do get an i7-13700H instead as part of a different model which of course has more coarse threads and XE integrated graphics but if you've got less to spend you're on a tighter budget and feel like one of these mini machines is right for you then the 12th gen chip is still more than enough for most. Hopefully I'll be able to test the more powerful model soon. Now although I want to try gaming because at the time of writing I'm really not expecting much. This machine isn't intended for that but this is primarily a gaming channel so everything that comes through the door must get a gaming test. According to GPU-Z the i7-12650H uses Intel 64EU UHD graphics which are also found in the i3-12-10U and the 12-15U albeit with lower boost clocks. Here we can go up to 1400 megahertz but Intel UHD graphics don't exactly have a brilliant reputation so can we crack 30 FPS? This mini PC should start all the games we want to throw at it but can it actually run them? Well let's see what 45 watts of processor power and no discrete GPU can do. First of all I had to try some lightweight or lighter weight esports titles, Overwatch 2 was first up and it was a bit of a stutter fest but capping the game to 60 will lead to a better experience. An average frame rate of 77 was probably about double what I was expecting. I'm sure the fast 12th gen i7 is definitely carrying us here but things have certainly come a long way for iGPUs. I probably didn't need performance mode for Fortnite, I'm sure regular DX12 mode and the lowest settings would have been fine but the more frames the better. Honestly if it's gaming you are more concerned about but you still want a mini machine, I'd look into some other options from Minis Forum but the thing is we're still getting better than expected results for sure. I remember just a few years ago when an Intel chip in combination with integrated graphics was very bad news indeed. Here though we are getting playable performance. The same can be said for CSGO, 1080p lowest is fine with a few dips and drops. The GPU clock is still maxed out so it's putting its all into it. Right now you might be wondering about acoustics. Thankfully this thing doesn't sound like a jet engine even when under load and in games. But let's really push this thing. This machine is great for home or office and it will let you play a cheeky bit of Fortnite and the like if work gets a bit boring, but how does it handle more demanding games? Well here's Warzone 2 in all its pixelated glory. Not only are we missing some pixels, but we are missing some grass textures as well. This isn't too concerning. I mean the enemy can't hide behind the grass if it's not there, right? It almost feels like cheating. Seriously though, 45 FPS is 45 more than I thought we'd get even with the graphical sacrifices. In the Resident Evil 4 demo our i7 was just sitting back and relaxing while the iGPU worked harder than anyone is probably going to work it ever again. It did manage to hit over 30 FPS though so just when I thought the scariest thing about this game was about to be the performance it took me by surprise. The spooky atmosphere still remains despite the heavy FSR implementation but it's a good job FSR is included or else we'd be looking at a probably 15 FPS average. 
Usually it's AMD's integrated graphics that are constantly surprising me, but today it's Intel HD, sorry, UHD, who'd have thought it? This little Minis Forum machine is really giving it some, and by some miracle it's even managing to play Cyberpunk. I think we can all agree that this isn't Cyberpunk at its best, but if you showed me this 10 years ago and said it was running with no discrete graphics, I'd have laughed you out of my grandparents' spare bedroom. Forza Horizon 5 does have a very low preset, but I stuck with low instead and found that the i7 and UHD combo could still manage over 30 FPS with FXAA enabled here. A few little dips were reported with the frame time graph, but I didn't really feel this when playing it, and it seems fairly consistent overall. Finally then I just had to try Red Dead Redemption 2, this is one of my favourite games and I couldn't help but wonder if this little PC could play it at more than 30 FPS, which is how I currently experience it even on PS5. The textures look pretty bad, anything other than Ultra so I stuck with Ultra and even so 30 FPS was doable. I just realised I left TAA on and set to medium as well makes this result even more surprising. Everything else is at its respective lowest because honestly, it still looks great even if textures are the only setting you max out. Overall, the Minis Forum Nab 6 is a great everyday machine with easy and convenient access for upgrading or adding your own storage and RAM. This is especially handy if you buy the bare bones model of course and plan to add your own components at a later date. It isn't designed for gaming, I think that's a fair assessment, but somehow it can still sort of do it. So you could be doing some office work, work, homework, stuff like that, and then if you wanted to play a bit of CSGO, you definitely could. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed it, leave a like, leave a dislike if you didn't. Let me know what you think of this tiny machine in the comments down below. And as always, I hope to see all of you in the next one.